Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I like fountain pens and I like the ink that goes in them and I like the paper you write on. I like all that stuff and I like to share with you things that I find that I like and I, you know, there's also some things to steer around. Today is one that so far I like even though I, I really didn't think I would. And that, that happens every now and then and you may have noticed. And today I've got the Keiko Edge. This is the blue version. This is blue and gold. This hasn't been out nearly as long as the black and matte silver version that looks an awful lot like, well, let's just say the truth, that looks an awful lot like the Lamy 2000. And I really was never interested in the black and silver Keiko. And uh, so I just never did bite that bullet. And then they came out with the blue and the gold. And I saw it and I thought, you know, that gold seems to downplay a bit of that great big giant clip, which was kind of what made me go, eh, on the design of the pen. And so I, I bit the bullet. I really have been uh, pleasantly surprised by this pen. I won't say that, you know, just wow, it bowled me over, but I have been pleasantly surprised by this pen. Now, I'm not going to do a comparison of the Lamy 2000, this pen. There are other videos that do that. Um, instead, I want to I want to look at this pen on its own merit. I, I, I probably will mention that other pen every now and then, like the fact that this one doesn't cost $500 or $400 just to get the color blue. What? Anyway, uh, I, I'm not going to say any more. I promise I won't say another word about that. But what? Anyway, uh, this pen has actually been a pleasure right with. So that, well, let's just go ahead and flip that. Okay, so when you get the Keiko, it comes in this clear plastic box. I know that's very exciting for a lot of you, but there you are. And that is upside down. I may not be able to read Chinese, but I know up from down. Uh, so it comes in this simple box, simple instructions, put cartridge in here and twist that back on. Uh, however, that actually is one of the reasons I wanted to show you the box. Mine did not come, you will notice, with a cartridge. And I bought mine on eBay and you know sometimes there are sellers uh, from China that do not ship cartridges in their pens because they've been known to rupture on the way over. So I'm guessing that's why this happened. So I don't have an ink cartridge, but what I do have is a converter, and not just one converter, but when I open the pen, I have two standard international converters. I'm not sure um, because this is my first Keiko pen. I don't know if this is their standard a converter that they always sell, or if that's one that's just from that particular seller. Maybe some of you know and uh, can share that in the comments. But anywho, I don't have a cartridge, but I do have two, two converters. Talk about throwing the gauntlet down to those that share none in their boxes. There you go. Now let me open this up. You don't want to watch that. It's kind of unpleasant because it's just a simple plastic box that makes annoying noises. And then we'll look at it a little bit closer at the pen. I decided to show you the converter up close too. Very simple, uh, kind of a, a familiar looking Chinese international standard converter with a plastic bead to keep the ink agitated. Uh, nothing fancy at all, very just uh, ordinary that. Let's take a look at the pen. Okay, so you can see on the outside that it has that same sort of uh, brushed finish as the Lamy does. And so uh, as far as the characteristics of that material and the finish, very much the same, except of course this one is in blue. At the end of the cap, top of the cap, you do find that it is that Macrolon material, no insert or, or finial or anything like that, just polished. And actually I think that looks quite good. It is the same at the bottom of the barrel. So just a very uh, similar design and uh, I think nicely done. Now on the material, the Macrolon material, uh, you will find like on uh, Fountain Pen Network and elsewhere, you'll find some people who have had that black version and they've said that they've had problems with the edge here cracking. And it was said by some that maybe they had put the cap on too tight. I'm assuming they can't mean uh, when it snaps on in the capped position because there is no too tight. It stops with a firm stop and uh, that wouldn't make sense. My guess is that that's more wear and tear when people are posting the cap 
and uh, maybe they're pushing that too far. If that's possible, mine, even posted, still is loose right here at the edge. So I'm not sure what's causing that with some people. I don't know uh, how many people that's actually happening to, but you know, be aware of that. The section, let's move on to that. The section is aluminum. And I will tell you, when you look at the material and the color and the finish on the aluminum, which is also brushed like the Macrolon, I, I would love for this pen to be made entirely in that aluminum. It is really uh, a good looking finish. And I really like that. I thought, when I first saw it, I thought that was really quite striking. And a whole pen made like this would be really cool. So anyway, that's that's nice. It's comfortable, nice diameter. The the seam here is nice and uh, tight, so it's there's nothing. You run that over and you'll feel that there's a seam and the change of the material because there's a temperature difference between the aluminum and the Macrolon, uh, especially in, in the air conditioning here today. Uh, but you'll notice that. You will also notice that it has, very much like the Lamy, those same type of spring tabs that allow that cap to catch and uh, be capped. You hear that? And that goes on nicely. It holds firmly. There's not much turn here. So that seems to be well done and uh, not bad at all. I think finish on the pen is quite good and I'm impressed with that. Let's look at the nib. And uh, while we look at the nib, I'll also uh, share with you some of the specifications. See if I can get that camera to focus. So the nib, not a lot of detail, has the Keiko logo and Germany and fine. Now, Germany, this is a Schmidt nib. So if you're a fan of Schmidt nibs, and I personally, I am, I have good experience with them. Every now and then I'll hear or read where somebody kind of gripes about them. Uh, but my experience has been all good. I have, you know, the Muji pen has a Schmidt nib and that uh, writes quite well. This pen and some others that I have, all of them, uh, white, white, write reliably. Boy, I'm going to have an Elmer Fudd moment. And if you're Elmer Fudd, you don't want to say they white reliably, but they do. Uh, so there you go. Very, very simple design with a gold, I'm going to say gold tone finish. I don't think that's gold. I think that's just a gold plate. I think that's gold tone finish. And, uh, but it's, it's a nice, even finish, simple design there for that. But I really like the fit is that blue finish. Well, now that would be cool if they'd done like the uh, the Hongdian and made a blue finish here with this. I think I might like that. Hint, hint. Anyway, plastic feed is there. All of that's pretty standard. And as I said, mine's been perfectly reliable. I did get a little bit of dry out after a couple of weeks, but it was in my in a in a laptop bag, leaning up against a desk, and the pen was vertical almost all that time. And I think that probably played the biggest uh, factor in that. So uh, I haven't really had trouble overall generally with it drying out just that that one time. Okay, so let's do the writing sample. This is the Keiko Edge. And this is a fine nib. It is available in extra fine and medium as well. But this is the fine. And this is another appearance of the Birmingham Pen Company Electron. It's just a blue I've really come to like. And I felt it suited this pen very well. I think the other one I used it in was that Blue Light of Hope, which that, that also, I think it was a good, good match. I'm going to be quiet and let you hear. I think it's a fairly smooth nib. Show the wetness here. And it's, that's fairly wet. And uh, that'll be on my finger for a while because... Uh, this doesn't just wipe off. I have to go wash that off, this particular ink. And uh, I really, for the ink, I love it because it's just a really nicely saturated blue with some variation. 
And I think this pen, this nib, uh, show it off pretty well. So I like that too. Let's see here. You'll notice because it is a German nib that it's more of that western fine in its thickness. It's definitely not like uh, the Sailor Compass in that medium fine. It's, it's thicker than that. But it's a, it's a nice fine with a very nice line. The, the flow, uh, I find it just keeps up no problem whatsoever. Really, really good. So what do I like and dislike about the pen? Uh, first, and I know a lot of nibs strike me this way, but it is a nice smooth nib. Not a very quiet. You notice there's not a lot of audible feedback as much as with some of the pens I've reviewed more recently. So really good nib. I'm, I would expect that from Schmidt. So that's good. I, uh, I have not tested the extra fine. I really can't tell you about their extra fine, but the fine I can attest to have had a few of them and I've liked them all. They've been good. So it is a reliable pen. I mentioned that dry out issue. I think that was me having the pen vertically for a week in a bag, which was also in the car for a couple of those days. So I think that's my fault. Generally, I found it quite reliable. I'll put an asterisk just for my own problem, just in case that wasn't me and it is the pen, but I don't think so. It is, a, I think it's a, a reasonable uh, value on the price. Now, I think it's a good value. You get a good German nib. It's made of a good material. Uh, it's very nicely done, I will say. Very, very nicely done. It comes with a converter. It uses standard, and I'm going to put that on a plus. Uh, maybe a sub to the value part. It does use standard cartridges and converters, and so I like that. Uh, I'm going to use the converter more than the cartridges, but that that's one of those things. Negatives. There is some, I, I just don't know what to make of it. Uh, some have had those cracking problems, some have not, and I, I don't know. Uh, you know, sometimes you hear, uh, you can go and look up reviews for a Lexus, and you will find people who declare that they are horrible cars and they got a lemon and da 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 da. And yet you know uh, by the math of reality and repairs and all that kind of thing, that there actually are not that many out there, but all of those who are, they got the internet. And so there's that. Now, I'm not saying that's what this is. I'm just saying that makes it hard to gauge. If, uh, if there are hundreds, it's probably not a popular enough pin that there would be hundreds and it not be a problem. So, you know, do your research if that's something that, that bothers you. Certainly, you're taking a much lower risk at this price point. Um, I got mine, uh, I'm going to put that over here. I got mine at, uh, on, or on eBay, and I paid $14. Uh, you can get the black one right now for $13.50 on Amazon at the time that I'm filming this. So it's not a great, great risk, but, you know, it's not nothing. Uh, you could, you could go and get a great pastrami sandwich in New York City almost for that. And, ah, oh man, maybe I should start putting a test. Is the pen worth it by whether or not I choose it or the pastrami sandwich? But then they would all, they would all fail. I'm hungry. It's almost dinner time. Uh, and now I'm talking to myself, and you're still listening, and I apologize. Anyway, uh, so there are some people who have problems with those cracks. And um, what other negative would I find? The clip. How can I? How can I not mention the clip? Some of you may really like it. I will say I'm. I'm going to put this as a negative, uh, but almost a positive. Negative in that I don't like particularly the silver, the matte silver one. Uh, this blue one or blue, the blue pen with the gold clip. It does. It doesn't look as bad to me. I haven't seen the brown pen in person. The brown finish on the Macrolon and the aluminum looks good to me in photos, but I'm, I'm not sure, uh, so I can't really say. But the clip on the black one I would consider a negative, on the blue I would consider neutral. That's the way I would put that. Uh, it, it downplays it for me. So I, I like that. So there you go. Uh, would I recommend the pen? Yeah. I would. Even even with this little caveat, uh, I haven't, and I, I only include this because I haven't had mine long enough 
for that problem to rear its head if it's going to. And so I can't say that mine won't or hasn't. It just hasn't been long enough. Uh, it hasn't gotten enough wear and tear. So I would give that caveat. But would I recommend the pen? Yeah. Uh, overall, I would. I think if this is, it seems to me to be very well made. It writes quite well. It's a comfortable pen to use, and I, I think it looks pretty good. So, you know, those are, those are all the criteria I'm looking for at this price point. So there you go. I really do like uh, this pen. Let's Let's look at some size comparisons just really fast before we go. Uh, there is the Keiko fami whoop, a Familiar Pen. I'm almost knocking over my camera here. A Familiar Pen is a Jinhao 51A. Lots of you have those. You know it's on my favorite list. If I'm doing a top 10, which some of you recommended I should, I can give you a preview. This one's going to be on it. Uh, that's about the same size, different shape but about the same size. This is the Sailor Compass that I looked at last week. And that pen is a little bit smaller and of course a different shape, but that gives you, well actually, I don't know, it's so clear on this paper. Maybe it doesn't give you any idea. <laughs> Oops. And then there is the Lamy 2000. And of course it's slightly larger, but as you can see, it's not much larger. They're really kind of close in length, very close in length. Uh, in fact, I don't know. They may be exactly the same. Uh, and even in diameter, not really that different. It's just that that Lamy doesn't taper down, which makes it look maybe a little bit bigger. And maybe you don't have a compass. Maybe you don't have a Jinhao. Maybe you don't have a Lamy. Do you have a pencil? This is my favorite pencil. Uh, there is the size difference to a somewhat used uh, Mitsubishi office use only pencil, which is my absolute favorite. So there you go. Uh, that gives you some idea. I hope that you've enjoyed the review. Share it with somebody that if they're considering a pen. This might be one that they like. And uh, join us next time for our video. Like, subscribe, ring that bell so you'll know when the next uh, video is going to pop up. God bless you. Have a great week.